Hi everybody, I'm Liz. I'm one of the co-founders of Sister District and I am here right now with Josh Cole, one of our amazing candidates in Virginia. We are here in his campaign office and we are gonna talk to you a little bit today about Virginia and why it's so important and the issues that voters are really caring about right now on the ground with just 20 days to go? 19? 19, 19 days, to, days go. to go. Do you count election day as oh, you know one of the days? I, know. I know. See, there's, there's always a, wow. a debate. <laughs> um, so uh, hopefully you all know that Virginia is uh, having an incredible, uh, incredibly important general election this year. It's happening on November 5th. There's still lots of time to get involved. Um, and one of the reasons that it's so important is we are just four seats down from flipping the entire General Assembly. So, and this district, Josh's district, would be one of those red to blue flips. So how is the campaign going so far? And can you tell our folks at Sister District um, what kind of issues you're seeing that voters really care about yeah. when you're knocking doors and um, out in the community? Absolutely. So first of all, let me just say thank you all to all the many partners we have all over the US with Sister District. You guys are the bomb.com. So thank you all so much. Um, our campaign is going really well. We're in full swing. Um, we ran two years ago and we lost by just 73 votes um, after 147 people received the wrong ballot. Um, two years ago, we really weren't as helped as we are this year. It was just myself, my campaign manager, and a few volunteers. Um, this year, we're fully staffed up. I think we're up to about six um, staffers here um, just on our campaign side. That doesn't even count the field side with the coordinated campaign with the state uh, Democratic Party. So we're well in full swing. Um, we have people coming down every weekend here in the district knocking doors and people coming from all over to knock on doors um, because we showed them two years ago that this district could be flipped. And for the past three election cycle, this district has turned blue. Um, so it's about time that we make it official here on the state side um, for the House of Delegates and the Senate as well. Um, I mean, it's just awesome. We have so much momentum going on. People are coming out the wazoo, um, saying how they're ready for change, how they've never voted in an off, off your election before. And some people are even bragging that this will be their third consecutive election. Uh, so they voted in 2017, they voted in 2018 for the midterms, and now they're going to vote again Every for Virginia's year. midterms, if yes. you will. <laughs> and so everyone's like, this is super exciting. Yeah. Um, and I think we see momentum all across the state um, where people are calling this an off, off your election. I think I think we're going to have a great turnout this year. And it seemed a couple of weekends ago when I was here, there was the campaign office was completely full <laughs> of a whole bunch of young people, college Dems, mm -hmm. um, lots of volunteers. Those six staffers, I can't believe you're running this operation with only <laughs> with that few of people um, because you guys are doing an amazing job and everybody seems to be working really, really hard. Well, they are. <laughs> our team is awesome. I mean, whether it's our field team, our communications director, our finance people, finance guy rather, um, our campaign manager, everyone is on top of the game. They're doing a great job. Um, and I think people really see how hard we're working this year. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes, absolutely. So what are some of the issues that you've been hearing about most when you've been out talking to voters and you know what are what are people caring about yeah so um what I do actually, you care about yeah <laughs> so i actually grew up here this is uh my home district uh, my mom my dad everyone's from here so when we uh, started to run for office i knew what i wanted to run for but i said let me ask some of the locals what are their concerns and so in 2017 and 2019 the issues are pretty much the same traffic health care education and then you have those that are concerned about the environment. You have certain, those who are concerned about e equality. But when we talk about the people right here in this district, the 28th district is the gateway to the Washington, D.C. metropolitan area. Starts right in the city of Fredericksburg and stretches up to Stafford County. Um, and I don't have to tell you, if you've been stuck in the traffic, that we literally have the worst traffic in America. That's just not my opinion. I'm from Los Angeles. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> That's an actual report that came out last year. The worst traffic in America is between Washington, D.C. and Fredericksburg. And last, earlier this year in March, another report came out and said the most expensive commute in America is between Washington, D.C. and Fredericksburg. And I don't know what you have to do and what leadership you have to have on local or in the city um, or on the Board of Supervisors or in the House of Delegates to make the worst traffic in America right here in Fredericksburg. It's pretty bad, and I remember um, traffic is one of uh, Danica Rome's big Major issues, issues, which yep. we, we supported her back in uh, 2017, so mm -hmm. I, I feel like most Sister District volunteers will know that traffic around here is, yes. is really bad <laughs> in Northern Virginia. Um, 
Yeah, so what are some of the challenges that you've been coming up against like in the last couple weeks and how's the what's how's the campaign feel? What's yeah. the um, what what's the biggest uh, way to get you guys over the uh, I think line? Um, for us the biggest hurdle that we've come up against is one um, apathy. Mm -hmm. um, there are some people who are just not aware of the election, so mm -hmm. we're having to do double work to make sure they know that the election is on November the 5th. Um, Tuesday was the registration deadline. I believe we got a lot of people registered. Um, another thing is making sure that people understand the importance of the House of Delegates and the State Senate. Um, you, we're knocking on doors and people are like, yeah, I know what Congress is, but what do y'all do? <laughs> and I tell them, well, we determine the statement on wage. We can set that, we can lift that up for um, the Three states, Maryland, D.C., it's not state, we make it state good, but <laughs> D.C., Maryland, and West Virginia, uh, Virginia's state minimum wage is lower than theirs. Um, we're literally behind West Virginia, y'all. Um, no have, shade to West Virginia. Right, right. <laughs> um, but the cost of living is probably higher, higher here. here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So our state minimum wage is lower than theirs. We can lift that. Um, in the Commonwealth of Virginia, judges aren't elected by the, um, the communities. They're appointed by the House of Delegates and the State Senate. So if you're looking for fair judges or judges that look like you, we have to make sure we have legislators in those seats that are going to appoint the right people and not just their best friends. Um, whether it's holding Dominion Power accountable for how they're rape, robbing, and pillaging the people of, common, the, people of the Commonwealth. Um, we're the ones that hold Dominion, uh, Appalachian Power, all these different utility companies responsible for everything that they do. Um, I mean, there's so much that the House of Delegates and the Senate handles that I don't think everyday citizens actually realize. Yeah. Um, and on top of that, another big hurdle that we're running up against is um, our opponent, who's been on the Board of Supervisors for 12 years, um, and he has just been coming out with some outlandish attacks that are just out mm -hmm. the wazoo. Uh, he's sending mailers saying that, um, I have some. Do we have some? <laughs> <laughs> he's sending mailers saying that I'm gonna take away burgers, um, I'm gonna prevent you from driving your cars, um, we're gonna make sure that you can't travel, um, and basically all of this is due to the Green New Deal Virginia, mm -hmm. um, which was created um, last year, but we just officially launched our legislative agenda. So I'm glad he was clairvoyant, Great. you know, and could predict what our <laughs> legislative package is going to be, right? Um, and so when we came out with this plan, the, the Green New Deal is first important to understand that it's not an environmental plan. It's an intersectional plan that helps fight discrimination against people. It's going to fight for our economy and also protect our environment. Um, so it's intersecting. It's pulling all these things together. Um, and when we think about everything that's going on, I think he's really trying to deflect from his record being on the Board of Supervisors. Um, there was another mailer that just came out, I think like yesterday or something. Um, he talked about how my plan is uh, going to overcrowd schools. Um, and how he has spent money or fought for money on while he was on the board to get money to the schools. But mm -hmm. he doesn't tell you his record. In 2015, he took money. Conveniently left that off. Right. <laughs> $8.3 million he took from the schools and sent it towards transportation while he was the chair of the Regional Transportation Authority. Now, this is key also. Yeah. When you are spending a whole bunch of time talking about you're going to cut taxes, cut taxes, cut taxes, mm -hmm. that sounds cool. But when you cut taxes, that loses money that you have to spend. So now we have to rob Peter to pay Paul. He took money from the schools and put it towards transportation. Our local education association, the Stafford Education Association and the state Virginia Education Association, supported us and endorsed us over him because they know his history with fighting against teacher pay raises, fighting against raising money for the schools. So he's trying to deflect there. When it talks about more traffic, lit, I told you, we have the worst traffic in America. It's bad. He's been on the Board of Supervisors <laughs> for 12 years, and he was the chair of the transportation organization for the region. So he can be directly blamed for that. Um, and so we created a plan for the Regional Transportation Authority which will help get money here, and he's adamantly against it. Um, and he flip-flops depending on what audience he's in. He's, no, I'm not against I'm definitely against it. Or, I think we can consider it. We need to do some research. So depending on who where he's at, he flip-flops. Um, and then he talks about higher health care costs. Um, you know, the Medicaid expansion came into Virginia in 2018. Um, that gave over 300,000 citizens in the Commonwealth of Virginia access to affordable health care. 20,000 which of those receive um, help for their opioid, addi um, opioid addiction. Mm -hmm. 4,000 of those live right here in Stafford County. He has vowed the first day he gets in office, he's putting in legislation that would repeal the Medicaid expansion without having a proper plan in place. So that's 
four, almost 400,000, 300,000 citizens in the Commonwealth of Virginia that are going to immediately lose health care. And this is what's even more scary. This is why we have to retain the House of Delegates and the State Senate because the Medicaid it's expansion. Halloween, but I, don't I know. It's scary. <laughs> <laughs> the Medicaid has to be expanded every two years. So we did it in 2018. We have to do it again in 2020. And there are 300,000 citizens in the Commonwealth who cannot afford to wonder in 2020, will they have health care? Mm -hmm. um, the guy I'm running with for State Senate, Qasem Rashid, we were knocking on doors last week. And a lady said, um, We need y'all to win. We cannot afford for you to lose because we will most likely lose our health insurance. Um, and when a mother, a single mother with one child tells you that, that tells you where their focus are. They're not worried really about our names or what other promises they're doing. They're worried about next year, are they still going to be able to go see their doctor? Um, and so people need a person who's going to fight for them, who's not going to lie to them, who's not going to pull the wool over their eyes because it's an election campaign and try to paint himself as such a moderate when he has such a terrible trash track record on the Board of Supervisors. Uh, so that's our major hurdle. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Well, it sounds like he's pretty desperate if he's um, trying to slam you for taking away our burgers. Mm -hmm. <laughs> which is a strange, very strange accusation. Yeah. Um, but um, yeah, I mean, I think that story about the woman who's concerned about her health care really illustrates, you know, state ledge, as we all know, is so important for your daily life. It affects, you know, um, everything from where you're, how, how long it takes for you to get to work to whether or not you're going to have health care coverage um, in the next year or two. And so that's why we love supporting state ledge races. That's why we Absolutely. are excited to support your race. Thank you. And um, <laughs> there's still tons of time to get involved. There's tons of time to donate to Josh's campaign. Um, as you can see, it is, we're not in a fancy office here, although it's, it's, you guys have decorated it very nicely. <laughs> um, so every dollar goes a really long way and, um, and every phone call and every text and every, um, door knocked goes a, a really long way too. Yeah, yeah. So, so I would just say for those of you all who are watching, um, if you want to follow us, you can find us across all social media platforms, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter at J Cole, the number four VA, that's J C O L E the number four, and VA. Um, and you can check out our website at www.jgcole.org, which will tell you about our platform and what we can do, um, because it does matter who represents us. We really do have a plan. Um, and you know, with my experience, I've worked for the House of Delegates. I've been the Chief of Staff for a State Delegate. I work for the State Senate. Um, so I know the process. I know how to get legislation passed. I know how to read, write, and interpret the legislation. Um, and it's key to understand my opponent, while he's been elected before, um, every time we have a debate, he shows up unprepared. He's been using the exact same note cards for our very first debate. Um, and the difference between the Board of Supervisors and the House of Delegates is, on the Board of Supervisors, you have months to get different things passed. You can even have a year to get things passed. But in the House of Delegates, you only have three months yep. to get these things passed. And sometimes before you go to a committee, you may only have two or three days before that legislation comes to you to see what you're going to have. We don't have time. Around fast. We don't have yeah. time for unprepared legislators who just mm -hmm. want to get a, a chuck on their belt to say, oh, I'm a delegate. We need prepared people who are already going to hit the ground running, know what they're going to do. Um, and I have the experience of dealing with Richmond that my opponent doesn't have. Sounds amazing. I wish I could vote for you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thanks so much for joining us, and um, we're really excited to get out the vote in Virginia. Thank you. Remember, <laughs> November the 5th. November vote. the 5th. <laughs>